I just want, I wanted to ask you about everything that Angela Merkel and her team have delivered on the German economy. It seems it wasn't enough to increase her support. It's amazing when you reflect that unemployment down by half since 2005, growth averaging 2% in her second term, and yet she didn't do any better this time around. It seems that growth is not enough for the German electorate. What do you expect on the growth front? Yes, it seems like the famous Clinton quip that it's the economy stupid doesn't hold true for Germany in this election. And that's obviously partly related to the fact that Germany still has to cope with the huge inflow of immigrants uh, we have seen over the last two years, which is now uh, declining. But still, this is an ongoing issue and this has caused some frustration with the grand, grand coalition parties altogether. I mean, they lost almost 14 points altogether and has strengthened the borders on the left and on the right. What about the uh, issues that Germany has to deal with now? Um, investing in infrastructure, digitalization, uh, cutting taxes. These are things that Wolfgang Schäuble has promised. Can they get them done um, once they negotiate a coalition? It's going to be tricky. First of all, I think, you know, one should uh, take a step back and uh, from the kind of uh, election propaganda. I mean, the German government has already done quite a bit in, in terms of boosting investment. So there is a lot on the road. If you look at the construction sector, they are working at full capacity. So if you add further in terms of infrastructure demand, you might end up with higher prices, but not so much uh, better supply uh, in, in the economy. Uh, of course, um, the Jamaica coalition itself will be relatively tric tricky for Merkel to manage. If you look at some of the issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis Europe, social security, especially environment, it almost seems that the two parties are at the opposite ends. Uh, so if you look at it from a very simplistic kind of power uh, balance, you might even say they might neutralize each other to a certain extent and Merkel will keep on going uh, with her kind of course she has established during the last four or uh, 12 years. Um, the other factor in this equation which might make it a little difficult is that some of in the CDU and especially in the Bavarian CSU which lost heavily are attributing these losses to the fact that they have not been uh, catering sufficiently to the, to the conservative part of the electorate. So we might see that the CZ, that their right, uh, their the, the party members of the Christian Democrats are pushing a little bit more to the conservative element. So that's basically the balance Merkel has to deal with. Uh, Stefan, very good morning, Ms. Manners. How much of a risk is Brexit and a hard Brexit to the German industry in, in terms of the automakers and in terms of the exporters? Because that symbiotic, that bilateral relationship between Germany and the UK is, is very, very hard and heavy. How much risk is there in this Brexit negotiation for German industry? I think uh, even if Brexit, which is very hard to see, worked out relatively smoothly, uh, that would basically be a, a quite a setback for the uh, integration of the two countries. So, I mean, if you look at some of the value creation flows with parts of auto parts going back and forth uh, between the two countries, this, this will be impacted. So it will, it will certainly be negative. But I think it is naive to believe that, you know, it, the, the German elections will be the decisive factor when it comes to Brexit negotiations. It's, it's first uh, and uh, among every, uh, above all, uh, a, a deal between the UK and the EU. And uh, if you look at the positions of the various parties which are likely to form a coalition, everyone is basically uh, saying the same thing. Yes, the UK is important, but there can be no cherry picking and there has to be an orderly deal.